So very good. So in a workplace where you have very learned people, people who might have studied philosophy, people who have got knowledge and maybe doubts and questions, um, how do you approach that with that way if you feel that you might struggle to, to answer them? So I think there are three things I would like to, to kind of answer, three ways I would like to answer that question. The first thing is that the Prophet ﷺ said, بَلِّغُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Transmit from me even if it's only one ayah. And what's profound about this is, transmitting the Qur'an and Sunnah is a guaranteed success for you. And you if you're transmitting your own opinions, you're going to find it hard to defeat a philosopher. Because they've studied and they've got knowledge about how to argue with people and how to make you trip up. But if you answer with the Qur'an and Sunnah, you can't possibly go wrong, you've conveyed. So I would always answer with the Qur'an, that's the first thing. The second thing is, uh, and I always use that in da'wah now, I, I changed, I used to try to give da'wah very, like myself, try to explain to people, this is Islam. Now I just say to people, I'm gonna give you a copy of the Qur'an, I'm gonna highlight for you some things I think you'd be really interested in, take it, read it. Because I really believe that there's nothing I can say that is gonna be better than what they are going to find in the translation of the Qur'an, let alone the Qur'an itself. With regard to the second point is, definitely don't answer when you don't know. If they ask you a question, be honest. And it doesn't take anything away from Islam. To say, honestly, I'm not sure how to answer your question. And I definitely don't want to give you a false answer. Let me find out and come back to you. In the beginning, a person might have a lot of pride and, and look down and say, see, you don't even have answers. But over time, they will learn to respect you for it. So don't answer straight away. As for them being learned people, you do have to be prepared for it. Because when the Prophet ﷺ sent Mu'adh to Yemen, he said, he said, you're going to a people of the book. So let the first thing that you call them to be to testify there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. So what did he do? He prepared Mu'adh. You're going to Ahl Kitab. You're not going to the idol worshippers. Ahl Kitab, these are clever people. These are people who have studied. They have scripture. So be prepared for it. So I think it's not about you being the same as them. Because you don't need to compete with them. It's not a philosophy discussion. Yani. You're going to talk to them about conveying the Qur'an and Sunnah. But you do need to be prepared that they're not going to be like a regular person who's not going to ask and question. But also always remember that the truth is very, very sweet. Wallahi, the truth is sweet. And philosophy in general is very bitter. Even in Islam, even Islamic philosophy that's not really exist, but like ilm al-kalam and is very bitter you know it doesn't it doesn't nurture anything in the heart wallahi it brings nothing in the heart except nifaq hypocrisy it doesn't bring anything good it's very bitter very hard on the on the nafs it doesn't make sense it's very confusing whereas when you bring someone islam the simplicity and the ease of it and the truth of it will come through and it's not your job to guide them it's just your job to convey so i would say try to present more of the quran uh, be prepared if you don't know, say I don't know, go back and get the answer. Uh, and remember that the truth itself is sweet. And sometimes people you would think would never accept Islam, those people realize. Because if you look at the people, the Muslims who got involved in philosophy, most of them, before they died, they repented. And they repented and they said how empty they felt from their study of philosophy and how it never really answered anything for them. It made them look good, made them look clever. But it never really answered. From the people who felt this way, Al Ghazali, Rahimullah Ta'ala, uh, Fakhruddin al Razi also repented from it. Uh, and others, yani, among famous people who were involved in that, and they repented from it and they told the people that there's nothing, this is, left us empty, it left us with no, uh, no connection to Allah. So sometimes that connection to Allah. They can't find it in, what, in the knowledge they have. They find it in the, in the connection of the heart. This idea of calling upon Allah and praising Allah. But I would say that's how I would try to answer that one. And Allah knows best.